Alright guys, so today I'm doing a story time and just a disclaimer, I like cannot really tell a story because I be forgetting stuff. So just bear with me, this is like a little bootleg mukbang slash story time. So just if you're like cleaning the house, if you're doing your makeup, just enjoy the story. Comment below, subscribe, and here's the story. <laughs> Okay, so I'm not sure how I'm supposed to start a video like this because I don't do videos like this, but I got food, so I'm gonna talk to y'all. So I went to Chick fil A, and I always go to Chick fil A, guys. I need to stop because I'm gaining weight. But. You only live once. So I got some fries. I ate some of them in the car. But I got me a large fry. And got me 12. I got me 12 nuggets. I'm showing it to you guys. I guess it makes up like 12 nuggets. I got my 12 nuggets well done. Okay. Because I don't want no problems. And I got Chick-fil-A sauce. And honey mustard. And they only gave me one Chick-fil-A sauce, and that's really what I wanted. But I'm going to let it slide, though. And a peppermint milkshake. So, I just thought this was a perfect time to tell a story instead of just sitting and looking at the camera. So, here we are. And I'm probably supposed to have the food, the camera angle down at the food. But I don't do mukbangs, so... Mm. Today's video is going to be about the first and last time I encountered a bridezilla. Mm -hmm. So, I don't, I don't know if I could do this because I don't really smack and eat, but I don't really talk and eat if that makes sense. So it's just kind of like, this is kind of hard for me to do. Let me tell you, mukbangs take skill because I do not like to talk and eat at all. So the point of me doing these videos is for me to show you guys to take situations like this and turn them into lessons learned, okay? Because for upcoming makeup artists, you will be tried. You will be put in uncomfortable situations. And you have to remain professional. And keep pushing. Basically... Sometime earlier this year, I'm trying to think of the date, but it was earlier this year, I had somebody book me for a wedding. So just a backstory. This ain't gonna work. <laughs> so just a backstory. When somebody books me, they email me, ask me my rates, ask me if I'm available. I ask them how many people are being serviced, where this, where it's going to be at, what time I need to start, finish, X, Y, Z, boom, boom, boom. We get all the information together. I put it in an agreement. I send an invoice. The invoice includes a deposit that needs to be paid and also the total amount. So, um, personally, I send the invoices through, like, PayPal. So... When I send the invoice, it has the total amount, and then they pay the partial payment, which should be the deposit, and then you will see the remaining at the end. So, I got my things in order, you know what I'm saying? I try to be professional. So, I had a bride, she booked with me, and it's also mandatory when you book with me that we do a consultation. Not everybody that I'm servicing on their wedding day is a previous client or I've seen their face or done them, so this is not a blind date, okay? This is not going to be a issue on the day of so I want to make sure I know you I know your face I know what you want I know what you want for your bridesmaids I've done your makeup you're comfortable with me it's not going to be something that's uncomfortable because it is your wedding day so you want to make sure that that person is very comfortable with you on that day so if you book with me you have to do a consultation it's not really mandatory I will not service you if we don't do a consultation because people just get real crazy around their wedding day and I ain't got the time so good Real quick, let me know. What do you guys get from Chick-fil-A? I switch it up every time. I actually worked at Chick-fil-A for like six or seven years. 
So I'm kind of very familiar with the food and what I like and how I like it. But let me know what you eat. Mm -hmm. Moving on. So we did the consultation. I'm talking to her. Hey, how are you? What's your name? How are the wedding plans going? How is everybody? How are you? How is everything? That's just my me getting to know somebody, you know? So, of course, the next question, how do you want your makeup done on your wedding day? I don't just sit somebody down and start getting to work. Like, you have a say-so, you're getting paid, this is your face, whatever. So, I ask her how she wants her makeup done, and she shows me a... I'm biting my nail off. She shows me, like, a bronzy look. She was very chocolatey, beautiful complexion. So... She showed me a bronzy look. I'm like, oh, that's so pretty. Okay. You know, like orange in the crease and literally like a shimmery bronze. And I'm, I can do that look now. We know that. <laughs> so, I finished her makeup. And she gets up and looks at it. And she's like, oh, it's nice. But, you know, like it's not really giving me bridal. I'm like, okay. And at that point, we there's no issue there. Like, that's what a consultation is for. A consultation doesn't mean I'm going to nail it the first time. Um, it just means that we need to get it right so that you're happy and so that I'm happy that you're happy. So, so she's like, well, my colors are like rosy, pink, whatever, ivory. I forgot whatever else, but the main colors were like pink. And so she was like, I was thinking more of a pinky eye. So baby, why did you show me the bronzy eye? I was just giving you what you wanted. But okay, cool. I said, so would you like me to start over? She's like, yeah. I just want to make sure it's right. So, I did her eyes over. I was able to like wipe it off and kind of, you know, make it do what it do. She's like, okay, this is good. Great, boom. We did the consultation like, I want to say, I ate that fast, y'all. I got like two nuggets left. I, mean, I don't eat slow. That's probably why I don't talk and eat because, baby, I be hungry. But, oh, this is a big part of the story. How the heck could I forget this? <laughs> so, oh, it was either eight bridesmaids plus her or whatever. And or it was eight bridesmaids, two junior bridesmaids, and her. I don't really remember, but whatever it was, the time frame that I had, you guys have to realize I do makeup full time, so I always get asked, like, Oh, are you able to do it alone, or do you need to bring somebody? Um, I personally typically don't bring somebody because in the past I have not had anybody that I brought personally that I thought was up to par or who could work fast. Once I get going. I, okay, the first phase may take about an hour because I'm just like figuring out where things are, getting in the groove of things. Once I get going, I'm at 30, 25 minutes, and then the bride takes an hour, we get her right. And it's not that I'm rushing through anybody, it's just that you have to realize the bridesmaids looks are um, very similar. So it's I'm grabbing the same stuff pretty much as far as eyeshadow, prepping the skin, all that. I mean, of course, foundations and stuff are different, but we be on a roll, honey. So she asked me if I needed help. I was like, no, I won't need help. I was like, I can do it. Like, my time frame was from, like, 7 in the morning or something like that to, like, I don't know. Whatever it was, it was more than enough time when I broke it down how I normally do. Might I add, I do this all the time by myself and have extra time people always are like how are you finished and everybody looks great like i just get in my zone i don't really talk i don't play around i don't stop and eat i'm not stopping and sitting down like when i'm at work i'm at work like i i'm in grind mode i'm going i'm going so 
So, <laughs> so we did the consultation or whatever. So about two, three weeks after the consultation, I was at, this was in May. I was in May because I went to Florida for my friend's graduation. So I get a text message from her and she says, hey, Tasha. I wish I could find it. I don't even know. Let me see. Okay. Boom, you guys. I found the text messages. Ah, ah, ah. So anyways, I get a text message from her after the consultation. She says, hey, Natasha, I had a quick chat with the girls and they really want to make sure that there will be an assistant there so we can start makeup a little later. Say around 10 instead of 7. So we enjoy the morning together. Will you be able to arrange this? I said, hello. If someone is available that day to help me, I will let you know by the middle of the week. She sounds, she, she says, I'm trying to swallow and talk. Oh my God. She said, sounds good. It would be very crucial to have a second person. Or she didn't say very crucial. That's me being dramatic. She said, it would be crucial to have a second person. Well, the word crucial is uh, dramatic. So <laughs> there's that. So um, then she texts me again later in the week and said, hey, Natasha, just following up on whether you found an assistant. I said, hey, I've asked three artists and two are unavailable. One is going to let me know by tomorrow. She then says, okay. She then says, okay, we really need another person. So we aren't in a rush. We're hoping to start around 9 30, 10 and have everyone done by 1 p.m. for pictures. Okay, that's not an issue, but the thing is you have to realize in the middle of the May, May is my busiest month, baby. End of April, May, busy, busy. There's graduation, there's prom, there's freaking weddings, there's regular clients, you got photo shoots, you got people getting married, you got engagement shoots. It just everything happens in May. Okay, and everybody's trying to get it done because it's kind of the beginning of the summer. Like all the extra stuff, like photo shoots and stuff, is not really the summer summer because it's too hot to be doing. All it's a lot. Okay, so my point is, I asked you prior because I knew anybody else that I wanted to know, they would have to have known when we did the consultation a month before, or a few weeks before, so to make sure that they were free. I cannot do that for you a week before your wedding, baby, because it's just not realistic. And I personally work alone. I don't have an assistant. And I personally don't like calling people my assistant because if even if you do work under me, you're not an assistant. You're working. We're holding, we're holding the same weight. If, if you're not passing me my brushes and cleaning stuff, you're not an assistant. If you're doing full faces, you are not an assistant. So I know this is so off topic, but it just irritates me whenever I do like a wedding. And they're like, oh, your assistant, your assistant. That's not my assistant. She's a makeup artist. She's a full grown makeup artist. Okay. Okay. So anyway, this was the other issue. So, I do know a lot of other makeup artists, but they don't charge my rates. They charge more. A lot outside of the other ones that I asked. So, I basically told her, I was like, the ones that I have asked are not available. So, if you want these other makeup artists, you're going to have to pay the difference of their rate. Because what happens is, whenever I ask somebody to help me with a wedding, um, I'll basically just pay them. I'll be like, hey, I charge them X, Y, Z, and I'll pay you the full amount for that. So, I say it's... Let me just throw a number. Say it's $100 a face. Um, I'm just going to pay them $100. I'm not going to cut them any any less. I'm not going to give them any more. It's We're getting paid the same. That's why I said not an assistant. You're pulling your weight. You're working. You're putting in that work, baby. I need some water. This is too much. Let me tell y'all. My fridge has the best water. That was something that I told her. I was like, unless you're willing to pay the other rate for makeup artists that may be available, people in your budget, baby, are not available. And I said that in the nicest way. And she didn't respond to that. So her next test text was, any updates? I said, um, I haven't heard from her yet. I'll let you know by tonight. Which I did. The next text, I said, she's available. Her Instagram is XYZ. Please do a call sheet of what time the the um the ladies will be serviced so another thing is and please listen carefully this story isn't just to like bash anybody or just talk shit or nothing like that it's 
lessons learned for new makeup artists for people who are gonna go through this let me tell you so basically whenever I book somebody I have them do a call sheet if I'm studying makeup at seven everybody always wants to be last that's not realistic if there's eight of you guys somebody's gonna have to go if you guys gotta be done by say 12 you know what I'm saying so like everybody tries to be like oh I don't wanna go I don't wanna go I don't wanna. who's getting in the chair so to avoid that when I get there I need you guys to have your own cost sheet discuss who's gonna be going first who's gonna be going second who's gonna be third fourth fifth I just want to get there and say hey Annabelle hey why would I say Annabelle what the heck hey um Brittany like I just want to say the names and we go you know what I'm saying so yeah, I told her, please have a call sheet, blah, blah, blah. So everything was cool, and I had a makeup artist, right? So she texted me and said, hey, good morning, Natasha. She said, good morning, Natasha. Just checking in to see if you were all set for Saturday. My planner mentioned she gave you a call and emailed you the request, the requested information, which was like the hotel, the start time, finish time, the call sheet, all that kind of stuff is what the planner typically will send me. And I was like, everything's good. Let me know if you need me to do anything for you before Saturday. So she sent me a picture of the makeup that she wanted done just to ensure that I remembered. And she said, okay, great. I've been looking at a few makeups and I really want more of a full glam. This is what I forgot now that I'm reading. When I did her makeup, she really wanted it to be more natural. Um, that's how we did the bronzy look. So in her head, she was like, something's missing. So she basically was like, with more contouring, highlighting, and blush. The same lip we use in the trial. Something similar to this, and the bridesmaids will be the same we discussed at the trial. Okay, no problem. I can do more, baby. I can do more. Because people always be like, oh, natural. Because they think like, if you do a full glam, it's going to be like drag. But like, technically, this is a full glam. But baby, we're blended and we're good. So... I said, that's perfect. That's actually the exact look that I had in mind. See you soon. She said, great. Um, which is basically the look that we did, but just to have like an actual visual, I guess. We cool, we cool. We got, I got it, I got it. So, let me tell you what happened. So, Thursday, this same makeup artist who agreed to help me, she forgot that she had prior plans or she messed up the date. So, like, say I said it was like, um... Uh, May 5th right she thought that May 5th <laughs> she thought that May 5th was on a Friday and it was really on a Saturday you know what I'm saying I, I don't it wasn't the exact date I'm just throwing out something so she calls me on that Thursday and was like oh my gosh hey Tasha like I'm so sorry Ooh, sorry she's like I'm so sorry please don't be mad at me she's like I mixed up the dates I have to go back home she lives out of Atlanta she's like I have to go back home and work like I already have prior obligations she's like I'm so sorry I messed up the dates and I can't be mad at her because she was available where did I put the bag for this chip for I can't even be mad at her because she was available when I asked her last minute and I wasn't asking her last minute because I'm not prepared I was asking her you know to make sure that my bride was satisfied so I was like okay and I wasn't stressed about it I honestly was okay because I know I can handle all of those people by myself I know that that would not be an issue because I've done this before I've done weddings of up to 20 people before and done 12 out of the 20 in six to eight hours okay and I'm saying eight so I don't sound like a psychopath but six to eight hours okay so I'd be working so I was like okay cool I'll just let her know so I reached out to the planner and I asked her I let her know and see if you know she could help me like what should I do because I didn't want to stress the girl out because she was already like it's crucial like I need somebody so I'm like oh my god what am I gonna do <laughs> so um she was like yeah like I don't know like she wasn't much help honestly like it just was whatever so she gave so she um told me hey Natasha my planner gave me a call to inform that the second MUA will not be coming. Like I mentioned before, it's really important that we have two people because we have activities planned the morning of. I need a knee makeup done by 1 slash 1.30. I understand you can do everyone, but my girls don't want to have their makeup rushed since they're paying for it. With the wedding so close, with the wedding so close, this news is stressful. Have you been able to find another assistant? Okay, she texted me that at 10, 10 p.m. And the girl called me at, say, like, 5. Like, no, I haven't found anybody. Like, I barely found her. Like, nobody is available. Like, nobody is available. So, I'm just like, okay, Tasha, what are you going to do? And I'm like, in my head, I'm like, girl, 
I'm not even gonna rush nobody. That's the thing. I just work really fast. Like it's kind of like you know when you do something so much, you just get it. Like I do makeup full time. I do makeup all the time. But everybody knows Tasha is the queen of a quick face. Okay, and I do it right. I don't rush nobody because I don't like to play with nobody's money either. Okay, so I basically told her that whatever. She said when I booked with you, my main request was that you had an assistant, which you said you did. I never said I had an assistant, first of all. I said I could get one if it was necessary. And when we met at the consultation, I said, do you mind if I work by myself? You said, you can do whatever works for you. You can do whatever you're comfortable with. If you, she said, if you don't need an assistant, then we won't get one. You just assume that I need one because it's such a large number. When in, when in reality, your wedding party is not that big. But you know, it's your wedding day. It's an important day. I'm not here to tell you how to do <laughs> so whatever she said would you oh then she said would you be willing to give us a refund and we could try to see if we could find an artist with an assistant last minute girl first of all good luck with that okay and I basically told her what I told you you know during the consultation we discussed otherwise and um whatever and I basically told her no you cannot get a refund because I am not canceling services on you. I'm willing to show up and do full services for you ladies. You are the one that does not want to work with me anymore. So you're going to have to take that L on your deposit basically. You're not going to get money back because, because you are not getting your way when I'm doing everything that I can. Do you get what I'm saying? Like I'm trying to word this in a way where I don't sound like a bitch. <laughs> but that's not how that works. If I canceled or if I was able to unfulfill services, then okay, you can get a refund. But the thing is, at the end of the day, you're being a, br a bridezilla. Okay, you want to start at seven, at 10 instead of 7 when you don't even have to wake up. You're not going to be seated in my seat until 12. So what does that have to do with you? Your bridesmaids have to do with you tell them to do I'm doing a lot of hand movements a day. These nails, baby, I'm, I'm unstoppable. But yeah, so I basically told her that. She didn't text me back. So I said, I got somebody, my girl Austin. Hey, girl. Um, I don't know why I didn't think of Austin to begin with because I used to work with Austin. But I just be forgetting about people, girl. I'm so sorry, baby. But um, <laughs> I had called her in a panic and told her everything. She was like, yeah, I'm available. But Austin also had a flight like by what two o'clock or something like one or two so girl this day was just crazy baby this day was just crazy so i told her you know i found somebody she said what's her instagram you asking me you trying to be picky choosy now and uh we barely got a makeup artist so i just sent her instagram or whatever she said okay that's fine i'll be running she said i'll be running around all day so can you coordinate with the planner I said, we spoke, enjoy your day. So, there's no text until the drama, the drama starts, okay baby? So, I get to the, I get to the venue at 9.30 so that I could start at 10. My first one was at 10, so I always get there early just because, well, hotels, you never know, parking, you never know if you gotta wait at the front desk, you gotta wait for a chair. To, for them to set up like you know just like little things I just like to start on time and I also get there early in case of traffic or I get lost or anything because I'm always getting lost okay so I get there at 9 30 I get up there and I call Austin I'm like hey girl where are you at basically her car got a boot on it I think it was it got a boot on it but she couldn't get it, it was a long story so basically she just was like F it she ubered so now she had to uber she has an uber to this wedding so so she had a boot so she had to get a lift uber or whatever and she got there so mind you that that means that she was late but it wasn't a big deal i was gonna get started and so um she gets there i'm setting up no i set up already and then by the time i'm finished setting up she walks in she starts setting up so you know time has passed and I haven't seen one bridesmaid in sight all I've seen is the bride and she's just you know she's just there I haven't really said much to her god damn it why do I keep forgetting parts of the story this is why I don't do story times this is why I don't do story times okay so just okay backtrack real quick so basically um in my agreement it states that the full payment 
the remaining balance must be paid 24 hours before the um, wedding day. And I say that because I don't know if you guys have ever done a wedding or been around a wedding. There's too much going on. Nobody's worried about paying anybody. None of that. None of that. So personally, I've been in situations where I'm sitting around until the end of the ceremony waiting for my payment. And um, I've grown. I'm past that. I got things to do. You need to pay me so that I can go. I'm a woman of my word. Um, so if I'm receiving a payment, I will definitely be there unless, uh, some happened to me. And even if then you will get your money back, baby. Um, if you don't agree to those terms, you don't have to sign the contract and you don't have to book with me. That's your choice. All of that is in the agreement prior to the, um, prior to you paying your deposit and signing the agreement. Okay. So, you know, I'm really low-key an asshole because I feel like people just try to play with you. Like, And then another thing is, I'm not trying to collect money from different people. Oh, what's my balance? Oh, what did I pay? Oh, do you take cash? Oh, I don't have cash. Oh, do you have cash? Do you have sale? Do you? Oh, I don't have PayPal. I don't have... All this extra stuff. Every time I've ever done a wedding like that in the past, like, and I don't do that anymore. Ever, ever since I've done that, it's like, um, it's like, it's just a mess. So... My theory is if the bride's paying for everything, just go ahead and, and pay the invoice. If if you're not, have them send you the money and pay the invoice. It's very simple. And have my payment made so that I can get up in the morning in a great mood and come to you, okay? So I wake up in the morning, I don't see my payment. And I'm just like, you know, like, I really don't want to do her wedding at this point because she really has been getting on my last nerve. But I'm going to go. I'm going to go because let me tell you, I hate to be that person, but I have not shown up. I will literally not show up because you know you were you knew you were supposed to pay um or i'll let them know like hey the payment has been made i'm assuming that you don't need services today like it sounds so bitchy but there's certain things when it comes to this industry you have to put your foot down people will run after you like call it unprofessional if you want but um people literally will run over you and i'm a one i'm a one-man show i don't have anybody to back me up i don't have um a team i don't have anything so i have to really be firm and i let people get away with a lot okay so anyways So anyways, I get there, still no payment, uh, whatever. So I start setting up and nobody came up there. When I tell you, we didn't start till like 10.30 or 11. I kid you not. We didn't start till 10.30 or 11. And I'm like, wow. So they come up. Oh, 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 oh. This is why I can't. Oh my gosh. Why do I keep forgetting stuff? So. I get there and nobody's in the room except the bride, right? And I'm like, she's like, oh, let me call the bridesmaids and make sure that they're awake. Well, according to your previous text messages, y'all had plenty of activities that you wanted to do this morning. Why you wanted to start at 10 instead of 7. You have plenty of things planned why you couldn't get your makeup done at 7. Just like all that line, just say that you didn't want to start early. Don't say you had activities because when you're getting your makeup done, everybody's together, everybody's drinking mimosas, everybody's dancing, everybody's having a good time. If there's one or two people in the seat of a whole wedding party, they're still vibing too. So that was just a bunch of baloney. I've been doing this. I know how wedding stuff works. So it was whack. So when I get to the room, it was just her, blah, blah. So me and Austin have set up and we're sitting around waiting. Nobody nobody has come up yet so they start they basically come up like they done rolled out of bed they didn't eat breakfast because they were scurrying around trying to get breakfast so y'all didn't even eat breakfast somewhere so that's how i know y'all really didn't have shit planned y'all just didn't want to wake up so we start at say 10 30 i think it was 11 to be honest because i remember looking at austin like uh, uh like they had like a singing practice before like um it was an african wedding so like i guess they were like singing a song together um like they were really practicing before they sat on my chin i'm like y'all are on a time schedule and i'm not gonna rush at this point because you can't respect my time your time is out the window so so um we start or whatever and mind you with all that i finished on time i forgot what it was but austin had to leave by a certain time so that she can go catch her flight so come to find out austin only did two full faces and you know what it was? 
it's all coming back to me now. It was eight people, including the junior bridesmaids. So I don't know if you're not familiar, like junior bridesmaids, they don't get foundation typically. They'll just get like blush, a little wash of eyeshadow, mascara, or a lip gloss, maybe some face powder. Like it's like a five minute job max. Like they're not getting a full face. So that's not even 10 minutes of my time. That's why I was like, I really don't need no extra people helping me, okay? So, yeah, Austin did two people, and I don't even... Did she do the junior bridesmaid, or did I do both of them? I did do both, but I'll tell you why. She did the two bridesmaids and the junior bridesmaid, and she left. And in my head, I'm like, that is so dumb. It could have been avoided because we finished before we were supposed to. So I finished. I'm doing the bride, and she goes in the mirror, and she's like, um, I think it's just too pink. I'm like, girl, this is literally the picture that you asked for because the same day if you follow me on twitter you may know or you could lurk down i'm not gonna post nothing to nobody okay but i have posted a picture of a bride and i posted a picture of my bride i said do you guys think these no i said this is the look that she wanted and this is the look that i gave her did i nail it and literally everybody was like nailed it nailed it looks exactly the same looks exactly the same like I said so yeah she was basically like oh it's too pink but like you literally asked for like it wasn't pink it was like brown in the crease and like a like a rose gold lid like very soft nothing dramatic or anything like that so I'm just like this girl this girl so just did my job I was gracious I didn't have an attitude with her that day I was really just kind of like doing my job hi how are you how are you feeling okay cool like I'm not gonna hold any grudges like I'm here to do my job. It is what it is. You're going to come across unpleasant people sometime. And if, if it affects you that much, don't do it. But I just did my job. Whatever. So. um, At one point, one of the bridesmaids was like, oh, am I supposed to pay you or her? Which is, you know, this is before Austin left. My story's all over the place because I am getting sleepy, honey. I got the itis. And I'm just forgetting stuff but anyways and I was like oh no so I went and I pulled the bride aside and I said hey like you know the payment was actually due last night the, the remaining balance so can you go ahead and collect the money from all the girls and send and pay that invoice so I would appreciate that thank you um <clears throat> And so she's like, oh my God, yeah. I was like, I know we had, a, you know, some miscommunication last night, a little whatever, but we're past that. Sitting there, the other girl has left and I was like, okay girl, I'll pay you as soon as I leave. Uh, before I even drive off, I'll pay you when I'm done working. Cause I'm like trying to make sure the bride is done and everything. So I'm sitting there with my cr legs crossed at this point. I done packed my, my kit up, all of that. I'm waiting for my payment. I'm not going to just leave without no payment. Like, who does that? <laughs> so she's like, she they're taking their pictures. But I'm not going to interrupt. I really should have just been like, oh, hey, like, where's my money? But um, she's like, oh, I got to pay you. And I'm like, like, <laughs> you guys, I'm such a goofball. I'm like, yeah. And she's like, okay. So she pulls it up. And she's like, pulls up the PayPal. I'm like, just pay the invoice that was sent to you. It's in your email. She's like, okay. She's like, well, the invoice isn't pulling up, so can you just put in the remaining balance? And, um, like, basically, she was just sending me money. I was like, okay. So I put in the remaining balance, and she had to, like, confirm it or whatever. I wasn't going to just send no money. Like, I just put in the balance. And then she was like, oh, my God, I did it wrong. Can you do it again? I put it in again. And she's like, okay, I'm sending it now. And mind you, at this point, we're all walking out to the elevators um, to go downstairs because it's time for her to leave. So, like her family i guess was all staying on the same floor so it was kind of like um the elevators were it was a few of us at a time so i got on the first ride down because i was not going to be caught up in that mess so by the time i was like by the time i get down to this car my phone's gonna go off to ching 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 i'm gonna pay my girl austin and keep it pushing so i sit in the car and i wait and i wait and i wasn't gonna drive off and i wait till like i basically see them go in the in the limo or whatever and I sent her a text. I said, hey, you know, congratulations again. Please don't forget to pay the remaining balance before your ceremony starts. Because we all know once the ceremony starts, I'm not getting paid till the next day. I, we all know that. But I also am just not really a pushy person because I feel like I say stuff clear enough. So if I said it once, like, don't make me have to keep telling you, like, we're all grown as fuck. Stop acting dumb. You know you're supposed to pay somebody. So... 
um, because her venue was actually an hour away from the hotel. So she, I was like, you know, just pay it on your way, just whatever. So I sent the text and I was, I was confident in it. I was like, I'm going to get this money by the time I get home. Cause by the time I get home, it's like 30 minutes. So we cool. I get home, still nothing. And at this point I'm like, I fucked up. I fucked up. I'm not getting paid. <laughs> <sighs> so basically, I took a nap because when I get really nervous, when I get anxiety, when things are out of my control, you know what I do? You, I take a nap. It's just like when your parents used to whoop your ass and you used to go to sleep and wake up and be like, Whew. it's like life beat my ass and I just went to sleep. Like I was like, I just lost out on this money. And you know what? It'd be different if she just was like, don't come. I would have lost out on money. But guess what? Number one, I probably would have worked because she wouldn't have taken off my whole day. Number two, I wouldn't have done the work and wasted my time and my gas and everything and did the work and I got paid. Do you see where I'm coming from? All right. So, so I took a nap and I woke up like two hours later and I got a text from Austin she's like hey girl did she pay you meaning bitch where's my money and I already know girl like <laughs> I already knew and I was like god damn so I was like hey like I haven't received anything yet um once I do I'll send it but then I really sat on it and thought about it and was like that's not her fault that's not her problem this is really at this point this is my L so I sent her the money sometime that night I still hadn't got paid but I just took the L but I wasn't gonna have her not get paid I was like hey you know she didn't pay me but here's the money because I just feel like she did her job and she came through last minute and she did what she was supposed to do there's no reason why we both got to be mad and suffer so I paid her out of my pocket and so now now I'm livid. I'm livid because I just took two L's. Two big O L's, okay? I just paid somebody out of pocket and I didn't get paid. So I texted her and I basically went in. Like, it, mind you, I know it's her wedding, but you have to realize all her antics before. I texted her and it was like midnight, right? And I know that she has an African wedding. I know that their wedding is going all night, but there's no way. I'm sorry that you didn't look at your phone once. You knew that you had to pay me and honestly to avoid all this, you should have paid me the night before like you were supposed to. So I texted her at 12. So I wrote her at midnight and you guys have to realize like, I had nothing to lose at this point because I already took an L probably. So I just kind of went in. I said, hello, her name. I still haven't received a payment from you which is very frustrating i've waited the whole day i know today has been a very busy hectic and important day for you however sending a payment takes no time at all i asked you before i drove off to send it to avoid any issues i also went out of my way to make sure you had someone and come and help me as you requested and now i can't even pay her or will have to pay her out of my pocket which is a huge inconvenience which by this time i did pay her already but i just you know i had to make it dramatic which i did pay her out of my pocket but i told her i couldn't pay her whatever i said that looks bad on my part to ask somebody to help me and not pay them that's why as the contract stated the payment was due 24 hours before the wedding date to avoid situations like this a reminder was sent out as well which it is whenever i send out a, um a which i call it whenever i send out a invoice it doesn't automatically remind them but that morning and when i wake up i will send a reminder so that we can avoid that you see you see how i be having my stuff together um i said a reminder was sent out as well but due to miscommunication prior i didn't stress it because i didn't think this would be an issue at all so if you could please send over the payment as soon as possible that would be greatly appreciated thank you and i left it at that so that was at midnight and honestly I just went back to bed because like you guys realize I'm taking a nap and I'm going back to bed like I just really felt like well I'm not gonna get paid like I'm not gonna get paid and um the next day I did go to work I had work at nine so I woke up at eight I didn't see a payment or a text message back Bro, what do I do? I call my friend like, what do I do? 
what, what do I need to do? Because do I need to pull up? Or like, do I go off? Or what's happening? So she was like, um, just send her another text. Be nice. <laughs> she said, be nice. <laughs> And let her know you need to make a payment or you will file a police report for theft of services. Because I had all her information, so at this point, like, she could only go somewhere. I, like, I was going to get my money regardless. It was just going to be another unnecessary step when you could just pay me for what I've done. Like, my job. I texted her again. I texted her again. I said, hi, blank. I'm following up once more to request the funds owed from from your wedding party yesterday these funds were due on friday it's now sunday please send the balance please send the balance oh i did a typo i'm sorry please send the balance today before 9 p.m or we'll have to take matters into my own hands and follow police report in the morning which i don't want i didn't want to have to come to this but you haven't resp been responsive at all, so I'm only going to assume you have no plan on paying me for your services. Because, like, with everything in between, I just felt like she wasn't going to pay me. She was probably like, F her, da 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 Like, you know how some people be. I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't think like that, so I don't know. <laughs> you guys, within five minutes, I literally sent the text because it was a lot for me to send. Like, I don't want to have to to follow a police report on anybody so I put the phone down I went in my mom's room and I said girl I came back I got the phone my payment was sent she never even texted me back she never said my apologies or bitch f you or nothing she sent me my money and back to the junior bridesmaid part she sent me my payment minus the price for the junior bridesmaid which i peeped because when i was doing the calculations i was like something's off but whatever but only because one of the junior bridesmaids was her sister and when the other girl did it she took the makeup off and she took it off because she's like i don't like makeup she's being a brat i don't like makeup i don't want to wear makeup which i just feel like if the little girl don't want to wear makeup don't make her wear makeup like that's not her thing but she's like you're in the wedding you have to wear it you have to wear it so she was like, I don't want to wear makeup. So she took the makeup off. So what had happened was I had to, when I was finished with the whole wedding party, I had to redo it again, which like I said, it only took five minutes, but you basically got double service and then you didn't pay for any of them. So yeah, that was that. But she, and I should have been petty. I almost texted her and was like, um, you're missing X, Y, Z. But I was like, you know, what? we're going to leave her alone. We're going to leave that in the past and take this as lesson learned okay so basically moral of the story is you guys for those new to wedding stuff as you can see i had an agreement it didn't do shit for me because i almost didn't get paid <laughs> but make sure you stand your ground if your payment is due at a certain day put your foot down you give them a call let them know hey payment was due you need to pay it or i'm not coming through that's what I do now. I'm I'm not leaving the house. I'm not dealing with that again. You call me unprofessional. Call me this. But also you have an agreement that you agreed to and you sign. So you need to comply with that. Okay. So um, yeah. And try to remain professional. I mean I think I say went off on her because that's going off to me as a, as a professional. I didn't use any cuss words. I didn't talk about her. I didn't do anything. Oh my stomach hurts because I drank that milkshake. And I know I'm not supposed to drink milkshake. I don't do good with milk but anyways um yeah so lessons learned honey so now i am very stern i'll be putting in the contract that part in bold this part in bold highlight underlight color you got to you got to so you guys that pretty much completes the story time on the time i dealt with the bridezilla and almost did not get paid for my services for her services but um yeah this video i don't know how this video is gonna be because i cannot tell a story for shit i be jumping i really am forgetful like you guys think it's a joke like i really forget things like i can literally say something and then within the next minute be like what like i have short-term memory loss i'm like 90 percent sure i actually funny i just told my mom like a week ago i was like i really need to go to the doctor to check my brain like that's something that i need to do before the end of the year is see what's going on because i really be forgetting stuff like i feel like dory it's really bad it's really really bad but anyways enough of that 
Um, let me know if you like this video. Let me know if you want more because I have a lot of story times, honey. And uh, I will see you guys in my next video. The next video is either going to be a hair video or it's going to be a makeup video. But anyways, I'm out, guys. Bye.